I'm Angela Dalton, and we decided to have the entire team do this presentation because we are here from Keshav Holani, our analyst is here from India, financial analyst, head of IP development, Eliza Yapanen is here from Finland, Nicholas Duzinas from Greece via Switzerland, and I am uh, based in the US. So we are the dot play team. We are building a, a hub for gaming in Polkadot. So we'll go to the next slide. Oh, I guess I have the thing. Okay, sorry, so we're dot play. Uh, we are boldly backing creators. We're gonna get into how. So I'm Angela Dalton, as I mentioned. I have a traditional finance background uh, for 20 years. I started Signum Growth Capital in 2018 um, to invest and advise at the intersection of entertainment and video game spaces and emerging technologies, namely blockchain and AI. Uh, prior to uh, founding Signum Growth, I had a traditional, as I mentioned, traditional background as a licensed representative. So in 2019, I joined the Web3 Foundation as a lead advisor to the Polkadot uh, launch. And that, what that meant was really leading the regulatory process with the SEC over three years um, alongside others on the team. So um, I've been in the Polkadot ecosystem for a long time. My background, however, is in gaming and entertainment, as I mentioned. And so I'm excited to be getting back to my roots. Um, and we are investing, advising, and building uh, a, a gaming uh, unit within the Polkadot ecosystem. So I will let each of the team members introduce themselves as well. So hi from me, uh, I'm Nicholas. Many might know me from the ecosystem from Mayuna Network, which was the first, I would say, gaming infrastructure that we launched here on Polkadot a few years ago. Uh, my background was also in traditional finance, a bit also in uh, health management. So I got to have a, initially a corporate career working at Deutsche Bank and later on at GlaxoSmithKline. Moved to Switzerland about 12 years ago. That was during the financial crisis in Greece. And that was probably the first time that sort of this whole concept of Bitcoin and decentralization made sense to me. Um, the specific event for me, which sort of made all of this technology and all of this industry interesting, was when we had uh, something called capital controls in Greece, which meant that we couldn't touch our own money from the bank. We were limited to be able to go to an ATM machine and just raise 50 euros a day. And sort of that was the first time I questioned, why do I need an intermediary between me uh, and my money? Uh, a few years ago, I entered the blockchain and gaming space. Uh, we first built our own solo blockchain a few years ago. Uh, it was a fantastic experiment. It failed because we thought we were gonna be attractive to different type of ecosystems by building on solidity, uh, using sort of the consensus algorithm of EOS. I think we ended up being hated by everyone. And just a few years later, uh, I met up with uh, Cedric, who was at that point experimenting with Substrate. We found the technology to be super interesting, and uh, that's how we sort of we joined uh, the Polkadot ecosystem. And now I'm teaming up with Angela and the rest of the team, trying to see how we can put a much bigger focus on this vertical of gaming, uh, both from an infrastructure point of view, tooling, as well as sort of opening up the community. Um, and yeah, over to my team. Yeah, hi, I'm Eliza Yepin, and I'm head of IP at Dot Play. And my background is actually in animation, music, and gaming, as for most of my career, I have been a virtual pop star and gone viral and had, you know, 12 billion views on TikTok. Has that translated into 12 billion money? <laughs> Not really, but more on that later. Hi everyone, I'm Keshav. Uh, I'm an analyst that's been working with Angie for the past three years. Uh, she brought me into the space uh, and I've been working on uh, investing in everything related to the intersection of blockchain and gaming. Nice to meet you. Great. Uh, the other thing that we're doing is serving as a head ambassador. So I'm officially in the head ambassador role for gaming uh, within the Polkadot community. Uh, what we are planning to do with this is educate, evangelize, and represent all over the world in, in various gaming venues. Uh, and we are going to be building a team of evangelizers in the name of gaming streamers under us. So stay tuned on that. Uh, and then uh, I'll have Nick talk about a, a little bit what we're doing in the trenches. So one of the things that we really want to focus on is making sure that we can make ourselves available not only in these ecosystem events like this one, but also go out to the broader industry. Just to give you an example, uh, just in a few days, this team is going to be moving over to Cologne uh, for, the, uh, for Gamescom, which is the biggest gaming conference um, 
probably in the world, just to give you an indication, over 300,000 people went to that conference last year. And as you can see sort of from the pictures here, uh, these are the events that we did uh, this March, which we did at Gamescom. That's an event which is, uh, sorry, for GDC, uh, an event that uh, gets over 30,000 visitors, uh, both from the B2B side, but also uh, end users. Uh, so that's one of the things that we're focused on over the next years, making sure that we can make Polkadot visible in also events outside of our comfort zone uh, in the blockchain space. Okay, so we'll skip through a few of these so that we can get to, we, we talked about our vision, uh, which is to be a pivotal, pivotal hub for gaming in Polkadot. We're going to be building um, integration tools and games in the highest a growth mass market spaces. So we're gonna get to that. The good news is, is Polkadot is already leading the pack in gaming uh, because we've got Mythical. So Mythical is doing about 2X uh, transaction and NFT sales uh, relative to its closest competitor, Immutable. Immutable has built 300 games. So far, Mythical only really has one to date, which is NFL Rivals, but it's brought 5 million players. So um, if, if anybody was watching about a week ago, um, Pol uh, Mythical moved over from Ethereum to Polkadot, and the way we described it was moving a mountain in an ocean without creating a ripple. And that was led by Gautam and team at Blockdeep. Uh, the uh, 800,000 wallets, three and a half million NFTs uh, moved over really without a hitch. And that is only the first tranche of the move over to Polkadot. The mythical marketplace and the D market marketplace will be moving over. So we're gonna take that strength and we're gonna start building outside of mythical in other gaming spaces that are very large with a lot of different, a lot of players. The key moment here for us is really, um, in, is really, uh, you know, can be explained by Disney investing 1.5 billion dollars into Epic Games. Everyone knows Disney. Everyone doesn't know Epic Games, but Epic Games has has published games like Fortnite. Um, they've brought other games into their playground, like Rocket League, uh, and and others. And Disney recognized the fact that these mass market spaces where indie developers are creating new games and, and new entertainment is where the world is going. That is the future, not only of gaming, but of entertainment. So uh, just as an indication, last weekend, Disney hosted their D23 showcase where they give uh, a look into what is coming up for Disney. I mean, Disney is obviously a massive organization uh, globally. This year, for the first time, they did it on Fortnite, and they attracted the same number of concurrent viewer, viewers that watch the MTV Music Awards. So, and this is all in the game Fortnite. So, we plan to go to these audiences. What we've seen in blockchain so far in gaming is, is, base, is basically people going to build token-based games, let's say 25 to 50 Players come to play, launch a token, people try to sell the token. We call those token flips. That's not really mass market gaming. We want to go to places like Roblox, where 80 million people are visiting every day. Places like Fortnite, where 70 million people are visiting every month and playing and building entertainment and games for each other, for their communities. We want to go there and port those people into the Polkadot ecosystem. User-generated content is the new mall. If, any, if anyone has any exposure to 12-year-olds, Eliza and I both have one, um, <laughs> these, and, and, and Nick has a 10-year-old, uh, these uh, kids are not considering themselves gamers, and this is where they're spending their time. And they're creating. They're creating. They're not just playing. They're creating. And AI is pouring gasoline on the UGC fire. So content creation is exploding. The distinct number of digital assets, or think of it as 3D art inside these spaces, is exploding, and AI is only going to be gasoline on that fire. So yeah, as I mentioned, did the 12 billion turn into 12 billion in cash? Um, the lessons of the early YouTube is a very good example of what we're seeing in UGC spaces in Roblox and Fortnite, where the creator economies are well, not exactly living up to it, not to mention that you've got the platform overlords. Um, and this is a case where if you create businesses, if you create content, you're actually building 
value for them and they hold the keys. You never actually own your audience. And they can turn that off and they can turn that on. And what we're seeing here is this is a great concept of democratizing creativity by letting everybody get on a platform and have a voice, but with poor kind of technological infrastructure. Great, so I think we're gonna go over some of the, um, you know, the prior investments that we've made. This is the groundwork. We call this the groundwork page. We've made a lot of investments and, and into some of these platforms where this new creation is happening. Uh, and then, you know, Nick is gonna go into the partners that uh, he laid the groundwork for when he was at Ayuna. Uh, so I'll have Keshav go through a few of these. Yeah, so we've laid the groundwork uh, in the gaming space since 2018 by building relationships and making investments. And we've invested across, uh, across the horizon where we've invested in companies from the seed stage all the way to the pre-IPO. Um, one of them uh, that I'd like to bring up on the seed side is Sortium. It's a 3D uh, asset uh, gen AI tool, which uh, cuts down costs dramatically as well as time for uh, creators, uh, smaller creators, as well as studios that are trying to build these assets into the game. Uh, similarly, on the other end of the spectrum, uh, we've also invested in Epic Games, uh, which is uh, one of the behemoths in the space. Uh, they, they run their own uh, gaming engine, as well as they have uh, their own game, Fortnite, which has recently uh, become a more open platform, and they've introduced a UGC uh, space called uh, UEFN in it. So uh, we, we've always been in these spaces and all these, uh, it all, all these investments build upon our thesis. Um, I'll give maybe a bit of an overview of how we got here. The whole idea was how can we create sort of this team uh, focused on the gaming vertical. This is an effort that started from the tooling side, I think over a year ago during the first Parachain Summit where Parity, along with the different parachains, we put sort of this focus uh, on the gaming vertical. Uh, so one of the first things that we did uh, was reached out to Unity, uh, made sure that we can create a Polkadot Unity SDK in a verified way in order to be able to open up sort of the market uh, to game developers. I think what the partnership with Unity uh, gives us right here is a focus on mobile gaming, uh, which is something which is really important. We made the SDK in a way that we can abstract the wallet and make sure that we can make uh, user onboarding relatively easy. But if you look at it from a game developer's point of view, uh, once you sort of enter the ecosystem, we have a number of partners, which you can see it's the power chains. You can see the power chain as implementation partners, whether that's Moonbeam, Ayuna Network. If you want to launch even your own uh, app chain, you can reach out to the team of Tansi. And obviously adding teams like uh, Blocktip, who set up the whole um, mythical blockchain is a big cornerstone of, what, cornerstone of what we're trying to do. The second part is the hub, where we're creating right now essentially a portal to make sure that every game developer that comes into our ecosystem not only has access to the right teams, but also the right tools uh, that they need to move forward. Yes, so ultimately the point is that we actually see Web3 as empowering creators through the entire life cycle across a lot of platforms. This is the real transmedia vision, which many tout and talk about, but is very cumbersome and very difficult from everything from IP agreements to actual like transactions to porting your audiences. And we believe Web3 is gonna tie it all together. In fact, we know it will. One of the things that we plan to do also is to bring IP with us to the, to the build party. So if you come as game developers and uh, are ready to build on Polkadot, we are going to bring IP. One of the IPs that we're gonna bring is Mercedes Vernado. Uh, her name is now, most, uh, she was Sasha Banks in WWE, now she's Mercedes Monet. And she is going to be the lead character in some games that we're gonna be building in Polkadot. And she's gonna be a representative of Polkadot inside these games. So we're really excited about that. Uh, one of the things that we're gonna be doing with her is building a digital native luxury fashion line. She's, uh, as a kid, she grew up in Boston, um, single mom. She had a physically disabled brother who she took care of. She had to actually leave school to, to take care of her brother. And she dreamed at the time of becoming a WWE fighter and a fashion designer. And so inside these digital spaces, as a rep representative of Polkadot, we're going to enable her to be both. Dubit is going to be creating the fashion for her uh, across many, many games in Roblox. So we're excited uh, to see how that rolls out. 
And then we've got a couple of others. Many of you know, know Connor Daly. A few of you in the crowd here were at the Indy 500 race. And uh, he is going to be a superstar in one of our games as well. And then the uh, Studio Killers in the Middle was created by Eliza Yapanen on our team. And uh, again, as she mentioned, 12 billion views so far on TikTok. Yes, and it's actually my experience having you know, worked with a virtual pop star, creating content on social media, working with the music industry and working with television and working you know, with gaming, um, that through this knowledge, we're actually going to create more influencers, our own KOLs. Uh, for dot play, we're actually gonna through these systems create our own superstars. Oh yes, and as you can see, the cute girl in the pink over there—that's Dotty Dot. Um, she's going to be uh, dot play's very own influencer. Um, so, yep, yeah, maybe an overview of what we're trying to do: trying to bring together communities, uh, bring together the best teams that we have here into the ecosystem find the right tooling, and make sure that we can onboard the best game developers out there. So that's sort of our goal here with .play, and yeah. So just to let everyone know where to find us, uh, the QR code is our newsletter, Bits of Signum, sponsored by .play. And another really exciting uh, group that we are starting, and everyone in the community is, is welcome, are called, is called our Questing Party Partners. So we invite you all to become our Questing Party Partners. And what this means is that you will join our game souk. Uh, we meet fortnightly. That is supposed to be funny, uh, punny. Um, we meet fortnightly on Zoom, Wednesdays, 10 a.m. Eastern. And we invite people to come and bring your ideas, bring the news, bring what has happened over the last couple of weeks that might be an interesting development as we build out these games in Polkadot um, and potentially join one of these teams. We're going to be having many developer teams that are that are going to be popping up and we're going to, we will need your help and we'll need people who understand both Polkadot and gaming. Uh, and then the last thing that I would say is uh, follow us on Twitter uh, at dot play teams and stay tuned for the LinkedIn, which is coming as well as our website. Thank you all so much for listening and come join us.